the studio had 15 regular models who worked the year round, five days a week, uh, from three to five every day. And he wanted to have uh, women of various shapes, sizes, and ages, and heights. Why he didn't care if they were pretty girls or not, as long as they had an allure that was chic. I walked into the boutique before I had time to actually ask for a job. I was whisked upstairs during the lunch hour. And the studio was seated together, Madame, Madame Zenaquer. And I said, what do I do now? And walk to this gentleman, I did. And then come back, I did. And he said, ça va. Uh, I went downstairs. So they gave me a chit for a hairdresser the next morning. And they said, and you arrive at 2.30 and ready to uh, show the collection at three. So it was certainly very hard work for all the beautiful French models who literally had to walk for miles. The majority of his clients then were private clients, ladies, and what they did is twice a year they allowed themselves two or three weeks to do fittings because each outfit was separately made and had to have fittings, including the corset that was sewn into their clothes. He was always very quietly spoken. He had a very quiet voice, a little bit high-pitched, uh, and he was always solicitous of his uh, girls and the models. They didn't want us to be too tired or stressed, etc. The only couture house in Paris that paid overtime. Many sumptuous creations were presented, the evening dresses perhaps being the most attractive of all. For the first season, you got nothing. If you stayed on, if they gave you a contract for the next season, you were allowed one free outfit, but it wasn't new. It had to be one of the ones either you had worn or somebody else had worn. That's when I took a um, dress called Pomesse, which is exactly the same twin. Actually, it was originally in wool. Uh, and it, in the silk, you have it called Zerline. And I took that wool one, and I adored it. I knew I'd never wear it. In the sort of dress rehearsals, when the garment could be not entirely finished, and there were lots of people, the top brass of the house sit, sitting around. If he had st stood up to start fiddling with a dress, then nobody would see anything but his back. So he always used the cane. He would say, now there, I think we need to do this, or here we need to do that. And it was interpreted by a lot of people saying, oh, he didn't like to touch women. Absolutely not true. The Duchess of Windsor. I wouldn't like to say naughty words, but she was really very rude and very unpleasant person. First of all, she, when she looked at you, she had a, uh, a nasty expression, and she always found something unpleasant to say. There's a photograph of me showing the Bonne Conduite, the Saint Laurent grey dress, which sold 9,000 times, by the way. Uh, and Sophia Loren is sitting in the front. It's the sort of uh, outfit which would not have suited her at all because she was so curvaceous. But anyway, she's sitting there thinking, well, that's not for me. <laughs> I loved working. I didn't enjoy the life uh, in Paris because social life in those days for a mannequin was just about zero because it was considered prostitutes. So uh, it was a very dull time outside of work. He died in October 57, which was a shock because he died of a heart attack. And then they brought the body back but the director then announced that nobody was to leave that six months. And we were issued with black coats. We were not allowed to stay home. The, the house was not open for business, but everyone had to be there for a week. The director announced that 
in effect, the king is dead, long live the king. And he announced that uh, Saint Laurent, who was the same age as some of us, we have to call him Monsieur, and uh, that he would carry right on, and after that week's morning, Monday, you know, check in, arrive at nine as always. He had been contributing an enormous amount of designs before Monsieur Dior died, but he was not allowed to sign it in his own name. I'm not involved in fashion at all. Uh, this this uh, was only my second career. The, my fifth career was lecturing, and that's what I loved most of all and did for 25 years. I feel like a ghost. <laughs> am I in 57 or am I in 2017? It feels very strange.